Let's talk about chord construction. And this, um, I think, is going to be more applicable to everybody in here. Now, you guys are familiar with the traditional E, right? Has anybody ever, ever played E like this? Okay. Have you? All the time. I, I, I invented this E, right? Okay. Do you guys uh, play what's commonly called E5? I think it's up here a little bit. Okay. Do you know why it works? Eno 3rd. What's that one? This? Eno <laughs> I don't know. What's Eno 3rd? Nice. That's awesome. It's, I see, I would call this an E major 7. That's just me. Oh. Oh, because you're not playing the third. You're, what are you talking about, dude? No third? What does that mean? Let's talk about it. Okay. Uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of different ways to play E. If you had room, you could play a bar chord up here. You could also play, you know, I, I tend to play it with my first and my pinky. You know, you can play that. Um, and then, of course, if you have a capo or if you just want to, you know, you, there's lots of different ways to play E. And as I discussed before, because I have gotten pretty familiar with all the notes on the neck, I can go to this next section and go, okay, what is it going to take for me to build an E? So we're going to go over this really quick, okay? Major chord construction is fundamentally two things, okay? It's a major third on the bottom and a minor third on the top. Now, what is a major third? Can somebody, by definition, read what a major third is? What is it equivalent to? It's right on your page. Equivalent to two whole steps. So we already defined what a whole step is. That's going to go from here to here. So two whole steps would be from here to here, okay? So that is your first those are your first two notes in your major chord, <coughs> okay? You also need to have, in this case, a minor third in a chord, you know, in the chords we're talking about. And depending upon whether they're major or minor will depend upon which order they go in. But a minor third is equivalent to, anybody? Bueller? Bueller? One and a half steps? Speak it out with authority. If you're wrong, we'll all laugh, and then it'll be over. It's not a big deal. One and a half steps. Okay, that's right. So in this case, one and a half steps, as my son is learning, is a fraction. Okay, so uh, the first step is from here to here. And a half step, instead of going all the way up, we're just going to go to here. Okay? Okay, so that is a minor third. There's lots of other um, jumps. There's perfect fourths. There's perfect fifths. There's blah, 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 blah. But you, too, can go take music theory if you want to learn that stuff, okay? What I'm concerned about is the major third and the minor third. And so let's take this uh, chord, which is E, okay? Now, I'm going to just tell you what these notes are, okay? The first note is an E. This is open. The second note is a B. That's right. The third note, E. Fourth note, G sharp. Very good. And then two open strings, B and E. So we've got E, B, and G sharp in here. Those are the notes that we're um, using. So we all know this is an E major chord. So let's go ahead and run it through the formula checker and find out if, you know, the person who calls this an E major deserves, you know, kudos. So we'll go ahead and start with our low E string. And what do we need to do first uh, if we're going to find a major chord? We need to do a, mi a major third as, as our first step. So that's going to be two whole steps. So we'll go here, and then we're going to go up another whole step. Does anybody know what that note is? That's a G sharp. So E, G sharp, and then our last note is going to be one and a half steps up from that, which is a B. Okay, so it's... Does that sound like an E? Okay. Those are the fundamental notes in that chord. It's an E, a G sharp, and a B, okay? Based on our formula, it's a, mi a major third on the bottom and a minor third on the top. And when I say bottom and top, what I mean is that the major third is the first jump and the minor third is the second jump. Now, if we want to flip that around and we want to develop a minor chord, okay, then we're going to uh, <coughs> have to make a few changes. Now it says a major chord is a major third on the bottom and a minor third on the top. What about a minor chord? What does it say there? Minor third on the top, major third on the third half step. Drop the third half step. Dude, 
That is beyond what I wanted to explain. See, that's like secret information. In the box right here, it says that minor third is a minor third on the bottom and a major third on the top, okay? So instead of us going up to the G sharp for that first note, we're actually gonna go to the G natural because we're gonna do a minor third, which is gonna go, okay? And then we're gonna do a major third. So it's still B, in this case B, and the E natural are the same. The only difference, as pointed out by our brother on the front row, is that third note, uh, in this case, is, uh, well, I don't know why they call it the third, I guess that's because of the scale, um, is off by one half step. So how does this sound, right? Whoop. Okay, major. So that's basically chord construction 101. You need to be able to identify two things. What is a major third and what is a minor third? That's the first thing. And the second thing is which order. For the major chords, the major third comes first. For the minor chords, the minor third comes first. Can we say that together? For the major chord, the major third comes first. And for the minor chord, the minor chord comes first. Okay. Now. When I, uh, I don't know whether I heard this from my music theory teacher or from one of the kids in the class that I was in, but somehow in my spirit man, I really got a hold of this, okay? Triad helps. The basic chord is a triad. Triad is uh, probably some sort of Greek term for three ads and uh, <laughs> three notes. And, um, <laughs> I know, yes. The longer Jody teaches, the smarter I feel. Okay. The, uh, the, uh, these uh, triad helps really do make a difference for me because I have memorized all this stuff. And I just like to just rattle off, you know, A, C, E, B, D, F, C, E, G, D, F, A, E, G, B, F, A, C, and G, B, D. So why is this important? It's important because if you're going to play a C chord of some type, it is going to have some type of C, some type of E, and some type of G in it. Okay, it's not going to have some type of F. It's not going to have some type of A. It's going to have some type of C, some type of E, and some type of G. You can take that to the bank. Now, the note you actually play on the guitar may be an F, or it may be something else, but it won't be called that. It'll be like a C, double flat E, triple sharp G. But it's going to be a C, and it's going to be an E, and it's going to be a G in some way or some fashion. And so when I am trying to think, oh, man, what is it again that's a B? Oh, it's a BDF. Okay, first things first, I know I'm going to be in the, in the realm of B, D, and F. Not in the realm of B, C and F, it's B, D and F. And so once I kind of start with that uh, boundary, here's the three notes. I just need to find out which one is which, you know. Then I can apply my uh, chord construction formula over the top, okay? So what else did I put here? Um, <clears throat> diminished chords and augmented chords. Again, things that you do not see in the worship environment very often, but they are there. They are part of Western music, and um, you need to be aware of them. Diminished chords, what does it say? They are what type of third? <laughs> two, two minor thirds. That is an ugly sound, okay? So in this case, there's, here's a minor chord. Our E minor again was... Okay, diminished is going to be... Okay. What about an augmented chord? Right, so this is going to be, no, that's not right. No, that's not right. That was right. Ooh, okay. That one sounds even worse than the diminished chord. Okay, you guys are welcome to write all the songs you want with diminished and augmented chords. And dude, have at it, okay? If your church wants to sing that stuff, then go for it. Mine, so far, is not mature enough yet to sing <laughs> songs with diminished chords in it. It's not life-giving for them, okay? But um, you just need to know it's there, okay? So any questions on chord construction or triad helps? Any questions? Okay. There will most definitely be sharps on some of them, yeah. 
Yeah, these are just the nor actually they're not even natural note names. These are just note names. They're not they're neither flat nor natural nor sharp. They are just a ballpark. So um, that was a great point. Uh, we already know that in our E chord to have a E, e natural E major chord, we're going to have a G sharp. But in this case, it's still an E G B. It's an E natural G sharp and B natural. So this is just to give you, especially if you're kind of new at music theory, to give you some place to start. So, so far, my suggestion is that you memorize your guitar neck, okay, and that you memorize these. 